Okay. Hello, everybody. We are live. And today is the special broadcast that I was going to do with um, my parents as soon as they jump into the um, um, show here. But um, what we're going to be doing is, as you saw by the intro, we're going to be talking about a special friend of ours who we took care of for many years. And it was a period of about 15 years. And I just got to wait here a moment. Here we go. Hello there, mom and dad. Hi, son. Can you hear me okay? Just turn up the volume. Okay, now I can. I just turned up the volume. Okay, great. So I uh, I just showed the um, introductory video that I did. And um, was just starting to share a little bit about how, about Willie and about how he lived with us for a period of about 15 years. Right. Mm -hmm. And so let's, let's start off at the beginning of his story and then let, let's intersect it with how we met him and then how we actually came to take care of him. So you guys know a little bit more about the beginning of his story than I do, I'm sure. Okay. Um, well, I don't know exactly where you want to begin. He be we met him in, in Florida, of course, in, in uh, his holiday. His life story. He, he was born in Queens, New York. Um, he was... Um, he joined the Marine Corps. Oh, hey, speaking of that, let me let me interrupt you. Sorry. The reason why I'm doing the live broadcast today is because today would have been his birthday. Mm -hmm. So it doing it today is a special homage to him as far as that's concerned. So he was born on July 11th, 1946. Yes. So and he, that would make him 75 years old today if he were still with us. Right, correct. So go ahead and continue from where you left off. Okay, well, uh, I don't know much about his early life. I kind of know he went to aviation high school, and from there he went into the Marine Corps. And this was in the Vietnam era. Uh, he wasn't able to, he was only in the Marines for a short time, I believe about two years, maybe a little bit more. And then he came down with uh, MS while he was on active duty in the Marine Corps. He was on guard duty when he came down with this. And well, we, yes. Well, let's, let's make sure we um, say what MS actually is in case there's those who are watching that don't know. That's a good idea. MS stands for multiple sclerosis, and it's a degenerative disease of, of the, um, the, the spinal cord. And it gradually takes your life away. It starts out with, uh, usually it, it affects different people different ways, but it usually starts out with a weakness in, in the limbs, and, and it just it's a progressive disease. Um, so. And he basically, when he came down with it, he came down with it uh, full-fledged at first and they didn't know because back then it was still kind of a mysterious disease for a lot of doctors and it took a long time to finally get uh, 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 a diagnosis a diagnosis for it and uh, because of that uh, he, his treatments weren't that great but they didn't have very good treatments back then but he had this kind where he, he, he basically took his whole body, then it gradually came back, uh, where for a while he was able to walk around with braces on his legs and crutches. 
he was even able to drive a car for a while and he was very very proud of the fact that he could drive a car and he his favorite car he talked about all the time was a caprice classic and yeah. that was like yeah back in the day back in the day and that yeah. was his and he traveled he traveled yes uh, and this was even after he was stricken with ms um he was in israel he went to he went to israel hawaii. and he went to hawaii yes europe didn't he not that i know of um but he did travel a lot. yes he did uh puerto rico puerto rico he yeah. lived in puerto rico for a while yeah. of course his last name is should i say his last name you can say his last name Okay, his last name is Vidal, which is, of course, Spanish, and he spoke Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. he tried to teach me Spanish unsuccessfully. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> While we're doing this, I'm going to um, share some um, pictures of him while we're talking. Oh, hang on, let me see okay so can everybody still see no no okay hang on this is this is my first time doing this hang on let me stop that uh do that entire screen see if this changes anything are you there you go okay now we see his picture yes okay this so this i can't <laughs> see you guys while i'm doing this so let me okay is that better can you see the whole screen now yeah. yes this was pretty much what he looked like uh, when we first met him. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in a wheelchair at that point, but he had use of both his arms. Mm -hmm. And both of his arms were really strong. He had a stronger voice, even though it was a little weaker than other people's voices. But he was able to get around uh, quite well. He was in a, an electric wheelchair, so he'd lost the use of both of his legs by this time. Yeah. We but, met him. He, he lit, When we met him, he lived with his mother. Well, just, yeah, I was going to say, just continue telling the story. Don't jump ahead to when he was in an electric wheelchair or not yet. Uh, okay. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> showing some pictures here. Yeah. That, that's us with all of him, with him and all of us. Well, that, that was actually the the day I got baptized. Was what? that your baptism? Was it? Yep. Wow. Yeah, you were a young kid then. What happened? <laughs> well, now, now I'm an old man like you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> There's this cowboy hat. I remember we put that cowboy hat on him, and he was a little reluctant to wear it when we took that picture. Uh, you know, he's a city boy. He was city oh, boy yeah. through and through. I mean, uh, he loved wearing jewelry. He had rings. He wore a watch all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember that, taking that picture. I remember it's that the, real well. And let's let's go ahead and um, go into um, – so we met him. We were in his congregation in Holiday. Mm -hmm. And this was down in Florida. And we really started getting to know him because we were in his book study. Mm -hmm. And for the viewers who don't know, a book study group was a small group of people, generally between, I'd say, 10 to 15 people, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the size. And they used to have it usually on like Monday or Tuesdays. And it would just be an hour long discussion of whatever the, you know, headquarters picked out for us to study which one of their publications that week. And that was the Watchtower Society. We were all Jehovah's Witnesses at that time. Correct. And we were in his book study group that was actually at his house, which helped him out a lot because he didn't have to go anywhere extra for that meeting that week. It was at his house. Right. And so after a period of time of going there, 
I started befriending him and our book study with him used to be on Tuesdays at his house. And I started going to his house every week on Wednesday to hang out with him later, you know, just, we would play board games. We would go out to eat, you know, we would go to the grocery store, do, do whatever. Let me just say something at this point. Willie never married. When he came down with his disease, he says, I'm married to my disease and yeah. I don't want to put any wife through the, the disease with me. So basically his mother took care of him and he also had a, a brother who did not live with him, but lived on the same street um, and would, would come in and take care of him too. Right. So. He, he was a very, very selfless person. Yes. Correct. So anyways. <laughs> I love this picture. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, one thing you forgot, you were you were seeing him uh, after school, you were going to see him, and you used to and he would take you over to that restaurant. Well instead of you walking because he had that electric wheelchair and you go real fast you would stand on the back of it and he would drive you guys over there. right i would stand on his wheelie bars that he had yeah <laughs> yes and and he would always buy and he would buy you dinner sometimes yep yep uh-huh and and then you'd play games and and then i'd come and pick you up later and then sometimes we would also um you know do activities that were for the the organization like study an article in one of their magazines or something for the week as well. We would do that together too. Mm -hmm. And obviously this picture is not at his house. So maybe no. we should talk a little bit about how he. Yeah. I kind of, I don't have, Time. that was even further back. They're not in order these pictures. So I apologize no. for that. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, this picture here, he loved children. Yes. yes. And, and I think that's why he, he really wanted you to, you were, he was a very outgoing person and so were you. Yes. And you, you came together and he, um, he, he loved children and I think he regret, well, I know he regretted never having had any children. Mm -hmm. um, and, did, and I think did. you were, you kind of, he kind of like adopted you in a way. And as you, as you could see in every picture that, you sent me that I'm sharing here. I blurred out the faces of everybody who wasn't us. So yes, <laughs> thank you. Yes, yeah. I I got a I got a story about if I can bring out this story. Of course, we met him at the Kingdom Hall at first, and then we ended up in his book at his house for the book study. This is his house. This was in front of yeah, his house. Yeah, and that's here. in front of his house there, and. Uh, I remember how I really met him. He was coming to the hall. Well, because he was in that wheelchair, he could not get into the bathroom at the Kingdom Hall to relieve himself. He had a, a, a super pubic uh, catheter and he had a, a pee bag and he needed to empty it. He could not get into the bathroom at the Kingdom Hall. Hey, so hey. he had to go outside and find a tree. <laughs> And empty his bag. Now let yeah. let's explain real quick what a you, super it, pubic catheter is. All right. If you look in this picture, you can see a tube that's around his leg, and the super pubic catheter is a catheter that's inserted directly above the pubic bone. That's super pubic in, directly into the bladder. Yeah. And then right. then it drains and it into a bag, and he the bag. Uh, hooked underneath his wheelchair. He and, usually wore a skirt over it yeah, and just for, when, he, when he was out, so it didn't show. And just for the viewer's knowledge, too, for a male, the, there's two different types of catheters on average for a male, minus the suprapubic one. One's called a condom catheter, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's like a condom that has the catheter tube coming out from it to a drainage bag. And then there's the regular catheter that they insert down into the urethra and it'll have a little balloon that'll hold it just beyond the muscle of the bladder that releases the urine. That's a and so this one was a special catheter because, mm -hmm. because of his disease, the muscles in his 
pubic area in his bladder weren't functioning properly for him to release that urine via the normal catheterization mm -hmm. methods. Well, there's also a third one. That's where uh, an individual uh, man or woman can self-catheterize themselves, and they would use one catheter at a time for that. And, and Correct. Of it. However, the method for that is still the same without having to cut a hole directly into the bladder. Correct. Yes, he had a surgical procedure. Yes. Yeah. At any rate, if I can get back in with that story, because I think this is of interest. So he had to go out and empty his bag out by a tree at the Kingdom Hall. Well, I went to the body of elders because I, I helped him out there and I found out about it. And I says, hey, we need to, you know, make the door bigger to go into the bathroom. And, and this became a big discussion. It was amazing how some elders were very cold hearted. They said, just let him go out there and relieve himself by the tree. They did not want us to uh, even consider op making the door opening bigger or make a handicapped bathroom because uh, they just didn't see any need for that back then. So that's how I got to know Willie even better. And I was kind of like uh, um, his campaigner to help him get a, a bathroom that was work for him. Now, see, isn't that even isn't that just crap right there? Because, I mean, what if it was cold outside or raining and you're going to make him go out to the bathroom like a dog? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, there was a, uh, there was, there was an extreme lack of love for, for him because of his disability. And I, we, we kind of came across that through all the years that he lived with us from the, friends and we'll and we'll get to some of those stories later too as well but for I now mean, let's just let's just keep introducing a little bit more how we got to know him and then the circumstances behind how he came to live with us let's okay, yes. let's go there first i'm going to keep showing some more pictures while you guys are talking all right you want to start you want me to um well as we said earlier, he and you came, went over to his house after school, and I'd come to pick him up. Well, one day I come to pick him up, and he said, and he says, um, pick, I don't have any money. Pick James up. To pick James up, yeah. And he says, I don't have any money. He couldn't. He couldn't take you out for dinner, and he didn't like hey, that. Hey, hey, mom, mom, what? We need to elaborate a little bit more on why this was the case because I'm getting to that. Okay, I'm, okay. Okay, if you let just let me continue. Sure, sure. Um I so I said to him and he said, I, I get a generous compensation from the VA. He's been under VA care. And he says, I don't know where my money went. And I says, uh, would you like me to investigate? So I investigated. And we found out that his brother had taken out a second mortgage on his house and also on the brother's house and that it, it was gone. He said, and it was all gone. The brother kept saying, he says, you're broke, you're broke. And he says, I shouldn't be broke. Well, he, he was also uh, charging up credit cards and, and he was using all of Will's money to pay for credit cards. Well, Willie was in a kind of a financial uh, pickle and, uh, so we ended up uh, getting him a lawyer because it was beyond our ability to handle this. See, here, you guys skipped a whole chunk of the story, though, because why was his brother now taking care of him? Because remember, when we first met him, his mother was taking care right. of him. Well, his mother passed away. His mother, his passed, mother away. passed away. And, and then also took care of him for about two years. And mm -hmm. then also what we should um, elaborate on is when his brother was taking care of him, that house that we just saw a few moments ago, he basically lived in that house by himself. And his yes. brother had another house about five houses down from where he lived. Correct. Yes. So there was a lot of, there was times when his brother would go out and be out doing whatever his brother was doing. And Willie would be home for, periods of 10 12 hours at a time by himself yeah and yes. there was and there was times his brother wouldn't come in till one two in the morning to put him in his bed because will could not get in his bed on his own and uh, he of course that's for a person with ms like he suffered that was very tiring to him and uh 
And his brother would come in half drunk and just do a half job and putting him in the his bed and leave him and sometimes not show up again till late in the morning to get him out of bed. So, right. as, the, so as those things progressed, um, Dad and I talked back and forth about um, could we possibly, is there a possibility that uh, we no, could move? You're, well, you're, you're going a little too far. Far ahead yet. Well, no, we were, we began talking about this time, yeah, I believe. Uh, but we got a lo but we got the lawyer. But we so. got the lawyer. And the lawyer. And, and of course, and then we talked with Will, and and he was he was very much for it. Well, and Willie was wanting to get away from his brother because he knew his care uh, was not adequate. Plus, Willie uh, had some extreme fears about his brother, which we'll relate later on. And uh, and the lawyer looked at all his situation. Basically, uh, the only thing Willie could do, because Willie was at the cusp of losing his house, and I don't know what else all. And uh, the lawyer said, uh, you need to file bankruptcy, but he recommended you need to get out of this house. You need to get away from your brother. Is there anything that you can do? So I found a lawyer who specialized in bankruptcy and guardianship. Those were the two things I looked for in the yellow pages. And I came yep. across this lawyer and we, we met with him and he, oh my gosh, this guy was a, we called him a, a barracuda. We called him <laughs> because he's, yeah. he, he, he was ex-military himself. And when, he, and when he was very sympathetic towards Willie's condition, yeah. And we began working with him, and. Uh, but that was after he moved in with us. It was not before the second lawyer. Well, the first lawyer recommended we get him out of the house. Well, we did, mm -hmm. as you well know. We uh, we devised a plan where uh, uh, we would go in there in the middle of the night. I think it was like one, two in the morning, and we moved them out of the house. Now, now, hang on, Dad. Let. Let's let's pause a little bit there because when we when we when you before you when you were devising that plan or just before you devised that plan to move him out when you had agreed already to move him in with us we we had already had our little mobile home there on Peggy Mac right yeah double wide yep uh -huh. and a couple different things I know. One thing I remember was there was a couple of people, you and somebody else in the hall that were talking about taking him in. Oh, yes. Yes. And then. Oh, yeah, that's right. He had the, he had. The, yeah, you're right. He had the choice of picking between three different families. That's correct. And, and we were all the three. That's right. And in the he, end. We ended up winning out to for him to move in with us. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, the mobile home that we were living in, it had no wheelchair access whatsoever. Yeah, and we had to build a ramp. And you had to build a ramp system for him to get into that house before he even moved in. Correct. And there was no handicap accommodations within the home either. So Correct. We, we, and we, then... We really Jerry rigged a lot of things. And then now I know this is going to go into a little bit after he moved in with us, but I actually gave up my bedroom for him to move in with us. Yes. But let's let's continue on and talk about, you know, pick up where you left off about your planning to move him into our house with us. Well, at any rate, the first lawyer, uh, what he did, he, he advised us to uh, do it sometime at night, get him out of there without his brother's knowledge, because Will had a fear of his brother because his brother had a very violent temper. And uh, so we, we got a couple of friends to help us that night uh, the, to, to go in there a particular time at night sneak in there, get him out, and get him out of the house before daylight or dawn. And also the lawyer wrote a letter uh, for Will to leave 
at, at the table in, in his house that he lived in for his brother to. Uh, so he know where he was. So he know where he was. I forgot about that letter. And uh, yep. of course, his brother knew where he was. was and uh, no, he did not know where he was. He just leaving. He did not tell him where he went. No. And he ended up coming to the Kingdom Hall about two weeks later to find out where he lived. And, Actually, uh, um, no. No. Because, no. because I remember that night. Because I, I really wanted to be a part of you helping him move out that in the middle of the night, and you guys wouldn't let me. And I remember I stayed with Grandma and Grandpa that night. And the next day, I went out in service with them, and he came into the Kingdom Hall oh, that, that morning looking oh. for him. I thought it was a few weeks later. Ah, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. No. Oh. He, mine's, he, mine's he came the very before. next morning looking for him. He didn't look at me or talk to me at all, but he came in, looked for him, and just walked right out. Uh-huh. Well, at any rate, he finally found out where uh, he was living. and um, He called the sheriff. Yeah, one night, well, there was there was a couple he, instances. He, yeah, first he called the sheriff. He, first he called the sheriff. He reported us to the police. At, no, no, not yet. First, he came over to, I was at work, and I remember getting a phone call from you at work. Mm -hmm. He brought, he knew where we lived. He mm -hmm. knew he was at our house. Mm -hmm. He brought over a bunch of his cronies mm -hmm. <laughs> with them, and they sat out in the street in front of our house protesting. And we had a chain link fence. In front we had a of chain us. link fence. And Will, and, and they de demanded to see Will. Well, Will came out there in the yard and uh, talked to them. and. I, I, basically, they all left. I guess, you know, Will said he was all right, told him that he's fine. He wants to be here uh, with us. Well, at any rate, that situation blew over. And I don't know if it was a week or two later, you know, quite a while ago. Well, we came home from a Thursday night meeting. And when we just got home, there was a knock on the door and there was two sheriff's officers at our door. And they asked if they could come in. We said, yes, please. And they were looking for Willie. So they asked us to leave the room and they asked, Will, are you being kept here against your will? Are you all right? And this and that. And we go, and he, of course, he said, yeah, of course. I, I, you know, and I, Will told him the story of why he left. And the officer goes, oh. And so they invited us back in. And then we told them that we were Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, and their eyes kind of rolled back. And, and they kind of knew his brother for some reason or another. They knew he was – they because I remember once as well, his brother's kind of a nutcase, you yeah. know. And uh, and I remember them saying that. But they also said, well, this is a very nice home. We had a nice double-wide mobile home, uh, and it was clean. And they go, this is really nice. And I go, well, why do you say that? Well, according to Will's brother – uh, he was living in some little single wide trailer that was all dirty and this and that. And and and, and he they reported that he was kidnapped. They said we yeah. kidnapped and him. And we kidnapped him. And of course we showed him all the legal papers and this and that, and they were very satisfied. And, with, and that was the end of the, of the sheriff. Now, not to put a um, I see how how am I trying to say this. I'm not trying to criticize or say anything bad about this community of people because Willie's brother was an exception as far as being a bad person, but his brother was a homosexual. Right. He was gay. Yep. And uh, like I said, I'm not trying to put a bad um, take on people who are gay or anything like that because this by no means is the case of everybody there's good and bad apples in every group and he just he just happened to put a bad taste in my mouth about that especially because of the religion but that's a whole nother story but he would also take before we moved him out we found out he was taking money for his boyfriends to take elaborate vacations with as well and yeah. that was also part of the reason why Willie was losing so much money was because of that. And losing his house because he had mortgaged Will's house 
to the point that, you know, the house wasn't, you know, wasn't as worth as much as, you know, what was loaned out. He took out $40,000 for an elaborate vacation to Puerto Rico, to Puerto Rico, you know, and he spent all that money on his boyfriend for that week there. There's Will's favorite car. There, yeah, like a and class that and, and about. also remember yeah. that, um, oh, boy, what was I trying to say? Shoot. Um, Money. Uh, oh, I completely lost my train of thought. Oh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> First sign. I know, right? <laughs> but I just it, the only sign. <laughs> yeah. Well, at any rate, that's basically you know some of the things his brother had did. Well. After uh, the the police officers came and went, I think it was another week or so. We were served papers, uh, or Willie was, Willie served, was served papers, papers. and uh, and the papers basically were that uh, uh, his brother was gonna try to get uh, what was it guardianship. guardianship, and this type of guardianship he wanted to put him into a Lutheran home down there. Uh, in the area, and that, and he wanted all his rights taken away, where he didn't have the right to decide where he could go or what to do with his money, or you know, had to take away all his rights all together. Yeah, he would lose all his rights. He'd lose the right to marry, the right to decide where he would live, the right to decide his own medical care, uh, <laughs> the right to whether he could marry now, or not, whether he could vote the or year, not. The year that he moved in with us that was uh 94 correct five 95 okay mm -hmm. so i mm -hmm. was i was Thir about 13 years old 13 mm -hmm. the the year that happened so um now see now let's let's talk about a little bit so when he first moved in with us of course you had to build the the wheelchair ramp for him so he could get in and out of the house on top of that because of the legal issues and everything you were not able to get the vehicle that he had with the wheelchair lift to get well, him here, in and out of the vehicle right well here's what's interesting we were going to take his van because he had a, 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 a handicap a accessible van you know with a wheelchair lift in it but we decided not to. Don't ask me why we didn't do it, because Will said it was his van. I know why. I looked at, I checked the registration. It was in the his. registration was in Will's name and his brother's name, and we did not want to be accused of stealing anything. So we decided that it would, we would leave his wheelchair van there. Right. We had a full size van. We bought a just a plain ramp. <laughs> Yeah, that we we got him into and in and out of that. I remember that and it was until, a it was an aluminum we ramp to, that you bought that could extend longer and shorter, and we'd have to put it in the van and take it out and yes, hold it right. every time he got in and out. Right, and that lasted until we were able to buy a van and get it retrofitted with a wheelchair lift. Right, which we all paid which for ourselves mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. But uh, at that, we, yeah, we had to do that plus. You didn't have a bedroom anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. I was, I remember that very well. I was, at first I was sleeping in the living room. Yeah. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I remember dragging my mattress from your bedroom to the living room every night to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, and, yeah, I was going to say we did that. Then we bought a, uh, I know this sounds silly, but I was a construction all my life, friend. So whoever's listening to this. We bought a uh, a twelve by thirty six uh, shed, a shell of a shed. Yep. And uh, had very high ceilings in it, and we retrofitted it into a nice master bedroom for your mom and I. 
And while we were doing that construction, we got the closet finished and the bathroom in there finished. And you lived in that closet in the bathroom until we got the rest of the room done, I remember. And so when you finished that, I finally came out of the closet. You finally came <laughs> out of the closet, right, exactly. But, but see, here's here's the thing, though. You, you had a closet space that you made, and you also had a little office space that you made in that, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I remember I would move back and forth in there depending on where you were working right so sometimes right. i was in the closet sometimes i was in the office yeah. and that that lasted for about a, a year, year i think about a year yeah it took me a while to get it all done and then and then when we got it done we moved out there and you got our old master bedroom right now now that to me that was like a, a great reward because I was a teenager that had the master bedroom of a house. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. walk-in closet. You I know, had walk-in closet. I had my own private bathroom. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you so, know, it, it was I was living in hog heaven at that point. Right. We we did what we could to make life easy. We still though didn't have a a proper handicapped bathroom for Will when he first moved there. We actually had to drape out. Now this is Florida, so it was warm outside. We had to drape a, uh, a curtain under the carport there and for privacy, and we would shower them outside. In the carport. In the carport. <laughs> yeah. And when well, it got cooler, uh, we did have to put him inside. So we put a lawn chair in the bathtub and lifted him in and out of that. I, I remember all the lifts we used to do, getting him in and out of the bathroom and yeah. in and out of his bed and everything. And that was that small mobile home bathtub. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a full-size bathtub. Right, right. You know, so we, we did a lot, you know, to make life as easy as possible. And um, and he would and he had a fantastic attitude through it all. He didn't complain about anything like that. It was just uh, where I go, where you go, we I go. Um, you know, and I'm also happy to be with you. It, and he was always just so upbeat and so happy. Uh, <laughs> well, re remember when we first took him in? Though he was living basically off Meals on Wheels and frozen yeah. dinners. Yes. That had and had a lot he, of infections. And he was getting not only the infections, but he was very malnourished because of those meals. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let me speak to the malnourishment. He, his, he was six foot two tall, and he weighed 150 pounds when we took him yeah, in. He was a tall man. Yes. Now, let me say, say this. After we took him in, uh, I took him down to the Tampa VA one day. And he he had just realized all the things that his brother had done with taking his money away and, and all this. And up to this point, he, he was always defending his brother. So all day long at the VA, and we had several doctor's appointments and places we had to go. He went to a psychiatrist there. Well, that was, yeah. Um, but this was the day of just doctor's appointments. Oh, okay. And he said, all day long, it, it just hit him. And this was the angriest I've ever seen this man. He goes, my brother was an asshole. My brother was an asshole. And that's, and he just repeated that just so much all day long. And that's it for the rest of his life. Yeah, well, but, but that was something he would just say all day that day. Because that was the day it just hit him, everything that, that had been done to him by his brother. And while that was unusual, he never had a disparaging word to say about anybody yeah. ever the whole time we knew him. And that was the only time he used a cuss word. Yeah, I mean, that was his biggest cuss word that he ever used. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, and, and Dad said, yes, he did uh, see a psychiatrist. This was as part of the, the guardianship case that came up. Um, at him. And that's when you got the second lawyer. Yeah, and then I got this. Well, this, yeah. Yeah, this that's was, when you got the second lawyer that was well, guardianship. And, well, he did the probably bankruptcy and guardianship. Yes, but that's yeah. the second lawyer. Right, okay. Um, so, anyways, um, the lawyer suggested that he get a psychological evaluation. Well, we, the, he, we got that through the VA. And it turned uh, turned out that it was like, I don't know, two, four hours evaluation. Anyway, when, when it came to um, the, the trial or, or the hearing for his guardianship, um, 
the his lawyer well you have to have three people one from the community oh, a social service worker and i guess some um, some doctor of some kind and they had to come in and they had to testify whether will was uh capable of making a decision to live on his own whether he had enough faculties well these three people no. came no these three people came in and it was kind of wishy-washy we weren't sure they they kind of said well you know they really weren't sure they thought maybe he he should shouldn't be making his own decision and then his lawyer called in the doctor who had seen him in the va the judge and he says what are your qualifications dr so-and-so i don't remember the name and he had about 10 pages of qualifications. He dealt with MS patients all the time exclusively. And um, he knew everything he about knew MS everything inside and out. everything about MS inside and out. He knew all the legal ramifications. And when the, the judge heard that, she just said, that's the end of it, she said. And then she turned to Will and she says, Mr. Vidal, where do you want to live? And he goes, with these people, meaning us. Yeah. And she says, that's the end of it. She says, if yeah. I, she says, if I'm ever in a situation like this man here, she says, I would want to be able to make my own decision as to where I live. And that was the end. And the thing was, the deal made, uh, Willie made a deal with his brother before that, and his brother accepted it. Basically, his brother says, if I lose the case, I will never bother you or see you again. And he kept he his word on that. that promise. And I remember the day that um, you guys went to the final court hearing for that. Mm -hmm. I was sick. And I remember you guys came home and you told me how we had won our case and we were going to go out and celebrate. And did I... Did I feel, ask me if I felt well enough to go out with you? At that point, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going out with you guys to celebrate. <laughs> I don't and, remember you being sick. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> oh, I do. I do. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah. we went, I think we went to Chili's to celebrate. You may have. We liked, he liked Chili's and, uh, and he liked uh, Red Lobster. Yeah. And he liked Olive Garden. At Olive Garden. Oh, speaking of Olive Garden, I, this is going back a little bit. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. When I first started getting to know him, and one day his brother came and took us out, me and Willie, and we went to Olive Garden that day. And, of course, <clears throat> Before we ever had Willie, uh, my my parents, you guys, you were, you guys were broke. We never went anywhere like that. Well, we were hand in mouth. We both worked uh, full time jobs. Both of us had full time jobs, and we just made enough money to uh, pay our bills, buy food, own a car, and that was about it. Right. And so we never really. I know we went. We had a restaurant that we'd go to occasionally here and there but at the time going to olive garden of course looking back it, it's kind of laughable but at the time it was like a really upscale place for me to go yep and i remember his brother take taking us out to olive garden and he's like get whatever you want on the menu i'm like what my eyes were like wide open like wow this is crazy this is cool right so that, you know, it's just a, a little memory I have of when I first met him and everything. And, of course, you know, Willie was always happy to take somebody out to eat and be with them and do that kind of stuff anyways. He was a very generous person. Yes. He was. Yeah. It, well, as you can imagine, there wasn't a lot he could do, but there was things he liked to do. He loved to go out to eat. He loved to go to movies. He loved to go into the Kingdom Hall. The meeting yep. from being around people. Loved he loved to go to the mall and go shopping. And yep. I've got a cute story about a mall, when we went to the mall one day. I've got two mall stories, actually. 
Yeah. Well, well, anyways, let's let's move on in our story a little bit. Yeah. So now we've won the court case, and he's living with us. Oh, you did forget to tell a little bit though about when he first moved in with us. How you had to learn, and you had to have nurses come over and train you how to take care of his catheter. Yes. Yes. Um. The VA nurses were great, uh, and I mean, they they taught me just about everything I needed to take. They they needed they showed me how to um, change his suprapubic catheter, which I did every other week for as long as he was with us. Um, they showed me how to transfer him from bed to wheelchair, and and vice versa. And they showed me how to use a Hoyer lift, which I did not have to use all the time. Um, how to do bowel care. they showed me how to do bowel care, uh, later on, uh, when he became bedridden, how to change, how to change sheets, how to do vent care. Uh, <laughs> well, you also knew how to, how to give them, uh, antibiotic treatments. I, I learned how to give shot. Well, I learned how to give shots when I took, uh, yeah, but they trained you in that. Yeah. Uh, you I, also I, learned how to do wound care. Wound, wound care. Oh, wound care. Yes, that's yeah. big. Yeah, because he had a bad bed sore at the end, and that. Took but a she's long not time. telling you when he came in and lived with us. He had been on antibiotics for years for an infection in his bladder all the time. Within just a less than a a half a year, because of your mother's care, that all cleared up, and went away, and he got off of antibiotics. Mm -hmm. um, he was on ciprofloxacin as a prophylactic, and that, yeah. that was a strong antibiotic to prevent um, UTIs, to pre prevent the bladder infection. So, and when when I started changing his catheter, and of course I, I did it a sterile, it's a sterile procedure, and I knew how to do that, thanks to the VA nurses again. Um, then we we no longer had to keep him on on that. Yeah, later on uh, in later times he did get um, occasional bladder infections, but that was you know on a course of antibiotics, it clears up, and then you go off. It wasn't like yeah. it wasn't an ongoing thing. Right. And, and 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 also to say an honor to your mother on his care. Um, she was so good at what she did in her training that she became an example because we were in a uh, we were in a VA system that uh, where we worked with the VA for home care. We were actually a satellite home care facility for a veteran. And it says it saved them uh, thousands and thousands of dollars by doing that instead of him being in a nursing home. And she was an example where they would send in student nurses galore just to uh, come to our house to see what a real home care uh, facility looked like and how clean it was because they always were marveled at how clean it was and how everything neat and orderly organized. Uh, I used to see your mom because uh, she had this big chart of all his medication, especially at the end, he was on quite a few. She would spend hours in there organizing those medications and the supplies and ordering and this and that. And uh, she spent hours doing that uh, in his care. And she was, uh, you know, uh, she was an example where they would bring student nurses out to, to uh, show what a, a real home care should look like. Yeah. No, I mean, mom was definitely a trooper and always took excellent care of him. I remember helping her out a lot, taking care of him, you know, helping her lift him in and out of the shower, the bed, you know, um, there was even times that I took care of him myself for times just to give her a break, you know, when you guys would go away or something. So, you know, I never had to do the, um, catheter care, but I did have to at least do his shower and bowel care a few times here and there. Uh -huh. um, let, let me just um, say something about the dad was talking about the cleanliness. Um, two times a year for, for two weeks each, the VA had a provision called respite and 
he went into a VA nursing home for two weeks yep. and we got a, a little vacation. Well, a few, few years in, uh, I had a nurse tell me, she says, I know you take really good care of him because his feet are clean and neat. And she says, you don't know how many um, veterans come in and they, they look really good in their face and, you know, upper body. But she said, when we go to bathe them, their feet are not taken care of. And I go, you know, like, <laughs> really? Now, now <laughs> let, let, me add, let me add something else to this story, too, because – as I had mentioned earlier, when we, before we got him, you guys were always struggling to make ends meet. Uh-huh. After we got him, because of the way the government um, took care of him and everything, they compensated you guys, or they compensated him enough to pay you guys to take care of him. Yeah. Right. And it was at that point in our lives that you guys had actually started making more money than you have ever had before in your life. Right. Correct. You know, and because of that, you know, like you said earlier, we, we were able to buy a new van that we were able to get retrofitted for him to get in and out of, to go places. Yeah. You were also, Able in um, 99, I remember we built that house. Actually, that, 98. 98? He started it in 98. We, we, we started in 98. We moved in in 99. Right, right. Yeah, I, I associate 99 just because that's when we moved in. But, yeah, yeah you're right. Because right. I, I remember I helped you do stuck on a bunch of houses because you had to deal with the builder. But, anyways. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And we thank you very much. Which which is also why I knew I didn't want to go into stucco for a living. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> but um, with that house, you were able to get a bathroom made specially for him. Right. You know, so, and able to have a house that was able to get him in and out of the house a lot easier because the ramp that you built at the mobile home, I remember a lot of times we had to help push him up the ramp because you didn't build it at the right grading. Yeah, for, we didn't have the room to give the, the make the ramp long enough. I, am, I I know, I, I know, but we but that's the whole point though. We had to still push him up and you know, yeah. the new house just made everything so much easier because yeah. it was a it wasn't a mobile home, it was a concrete foundation. Yeah. You had a little concrete ramp that went up into the door, real easy for him to get into. You know, just a whole bunch of things that were made for him so he could be comfortable in that house more so than he was the mobile home. Right. Yeah. That we never would have had without him. Yeah. This is, you know, your mom took care of him in the physical way. My uh, end of taking care was uh, actually that house. Uh, uh, I helped your mom and I, but mostly me, we helped design that house. Uh, for him, uh, we knew. Uh, I, I studied the, all the rules and regulations for handicap, and it made sure that the door was flush with the outside uh, sidewalk, so he didn't have to bump over anything uh, to come in when he came in in his wheelchair. Uh, we made sure that all the openings were three foot of door openings. We made sure the hallways were all four foot wide, and that uh, handicap shower. If you remember, it was uh, a flush shower floor. You know, we just rolled right in. There was no uh, lip or anything for it. And uh, we did that. The carpeting was glued down. The carpeting in the main house was glued down. Uh, This was uh, a time when laminate flooring was first coming out, but we didn't want to do laminate at that time. It would have fallen apart underneath the weight of that chair of his. And, uh, but... We, I learned all that. Plus, we we did the same thing with another house that we had uh, built, had had built, and moved in with them. That was his last home that he lived in, and um, so he was able to help me in ways of learning how more about construction, especially on handicap that I've been using to this very day, helping people, you know, as far as ramp building and this and that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yep. So that was 
you know, like I, like I was saying, you know, we had we had gotten him. We had had a whole lot to learn about taking care of him, and then find at by this point now we're our care of him was going pretty smoothly. You guys knew what you were doing. Mm -hmm. We had a house for him. Um, and of course I know that didn't, you didn't stay there until he finally passed away. You know, we, you had to do things to later houses and everything, but the whole, the whole point of that was that he started, you guys were in a routine. You knew how to, you knew what you were doing and things were going smoothly. And he was at that point, I think he was living the best he could have possibly lived for the situation he was in. Yes. Yes. And he knew it and he appreciated it yeah. all the time. Yeah. And yes. it was like every day. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank dad. Thank you. Uh, it's just, there was a, another thing about Will, uh, even after you moved out of the home, and of course when uh, Tim moved out, uh, got married, he was always worried about you guys. You know, yeah. he worried. You know, you were like his kids mm -hmm. or brothers. You know, I don't know how to describe it, but he always worried about you, hoping that everything was going well for you. Um, so I, I got a little thing about that when, when I, we were first, uh, he first moved in with us and I, I'd, I'd have to take him out to doctor's offices or whatever and appointments in, and, and I didn't quite know what to call him. I, I was calling him my boss for a while and, and I'd call him my friend and I'd call, <laughs> I didn't, didn't quite know how to refer to him. And uh, he said, I'm not your boss. I'm not your boss. Anyway. Well, here's the other story. When he he would, your mom would go grocery shopping on Thursdays. She'd go get her hair fixed and go grocery shopping. She'd always take Will with her on those Thursdays, and and uh, she would go take him out to eat that afternoon. Oh, this is funny. You know, and then that evening she would we wow. her and I would go to the restaurant together while you watched them. And they and they and, and, the, the, and the waitress that was there at noon looked at me. <laughs> you know, gave me a she, really good she looked look at me confused. Like, we well, got two husbands here. Yeah. She was very very worried. It was always funny. You know? That that is funny. Well, I, I know in a doctor's office, if somebody would would call me Mrs. Vidal, he would just smile from ear to ear. Yeah, he, <laughs> loved that. he loved that. Now let me mention this too, because a lot of times in you know like the videos that. I do. We'll, we'll talk about some of the negative things from the organization and the witnesses and everything. But actually, I'm going to put a positive spin on it because for Willie, that was his that was his social structure that he had. Yeah. You know, he always enjoyed going to the meetings and, you know, he loved people. He loved, you know, being able to just give a kiss and a hug to a sister. That was one of his favorite things. Yeah. You know, he liked, he loved kids and for him, it kept him active. It kept his mind active. It, it was a really good thing for him because, you know, it gave him, it gave him something he wouldn't have had otherwise, you know, yes. it gave him a structure. It gave him activity. Um, it even gave him a hope that, you know, he would never have had otherwise. And, and I, think I think meeting us gave him a gave him a good life for the last fifteen years. Yeah. And I just want to interject. You, you said he loved he loved to be in around the the women and he loved the children. And I and then we'd come home and we'd have conversations and and he would he would just sort of ask me. He says, "You think I'd make a good husband? You think I'd make a good father?" And, and at first, I didn't quite know how to answer that. But as time went on, I, I could see that I, I gave him a lot of positive reinforcement on that, I think, because he, I, he would have. He would have been a terrific husband and a terrific father. And as time went, and as time went on with them, we went from being uh, Dave and Barbara uh, to mom and dad, yeah. especially in the later years, especially the last five years of his life. We were mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And, uh, you know, uh, because uh, the way, especially the last year and a half of his life, it took both of us 24 seven to take care of him. Uh, Barb was doing the physical stuff. I was doing all the cleaning and washing and this yeah. and that, and even some meal preparation. It was something uh, he had an alarm system on his respirator. It was waking us up several times a night. That was just the last year and a half. The last but, year and a but, half. Yeah. But, uh, but he always called us mom and dad. And it was, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it was kind despite, of an honor. Just, yeah, despite all of his physical disabilities, he, he maintained a good attitude and was always appreciative of anything yeah. anybody did for him. And, and, and that's just the thing about him. He was, he was always so loving, so kind, so generous, he, you know, he didn't, he, I think out of the whole time that we knew him, he only got upset a few times. Yeah. You know, and I, I remember one of the big things he, he said to me and especially because every, because we always had to take care of him. He goes, if I could do it myself, I would. Yeah. You know, yeah. he always had that attitude. He always wanted to do as much for himself as he possibly could, even though that wasn't very much. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, yeah. He, yes. Yeah, he, he he didn't realize how much he did do though for us. Uh, he allowed us to, uh, uh, because of uh, the monetary payments that we were getting uh, through the help of the VA, he allowed us to have a nicer home. Allowed us to get give you guys an education after high school, uh, both you and your brother. Uh, it did many other things. I was able to afford therapy which yeah. I needed desperately because of my background. And it helped us. It helped me and your mom, especially. <laughs> yeah. and I guess your kids too, and, you know, down the road, uh, you know. Uh, so there was things he gave us, you know. He may not have been physically able to do it. But. Well, here's the thing. People who knew us and and kind and had some idea of what what we did for him they would always look at it as how much we did for him and i would say no 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 i said you don't realize how much he did for us oh, yes. uh, and, and and not just helping us um financially because of that but uh well he taught me a lot of i because of him i learned a lot of nursing skills because of him you learned a lot of nursing skills mm -hmm. um we we learned how to treat people who, who are handicapped, he would say, don't look at my disability. Don't judge me for what I can't do. Judge me for what I can do. Yeah. And just, just his whole attitude was, was, mm -hmm. was something that, that we learned. Um, it was just re very refreshing. And, yeah. we, and, you know, we learned when, when there's somebody in a wheelchair, um, don't ignore them. He says, like, here I am. I can speak for myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And to this day, I know when, uh, uh, well, he, he really taught me what it was to really show true love in so many ways. Uh, I look at that and also to uh, uh, always remember, no matter how bad a shape you may be in, sick-wise or disability-wise, there's always somebody worse than you are, and that helps you. But also, when I moved up here to this area and I got the job at the bus company as a an escort for wheelchair uh, people, I would uh, push them on the bus and take them off and get them wherever. It learned I was because of Will's experience. I had such compassion for these people, and I think it, you know it affected my ability much mm. better in dealing with them. And I think many of them appreciate that because they were always, you know, they weren't treated very well. People in wheelchairs generally are ignored and not treated very well. Mm -hmm. uh, even now at the farmer's market uh, where, you know, we have a booth at two farmer's markets. We have people wheel by us all the time in wheelchairs. I'm always saying hello to them. How are you doing? Sometimes they're shocked that anybody even talks to them. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. Yeah. yeah. And see, looking at this picture reminded me of something else. He, 
enabled us to do. I was able to get braces as a teenager to straighten out oh, the yeah. teeth of mine. Yeah, the Ferengi teeth. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love this picture of you and him. Yeah. That, that's a great picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Boy, yeah, I was he, so young then. Yeah. <laughs> now, there's one thing that uh, he hated, and this is why he called his brother an asshole from now on. Because if he went, he did a little bit of psychological therapy and also other things. But after he did, after he was secure living with us, he started opening up about what his brother did to him. Mm. His brother physically abused him. His brother uh, emotionally abused him. Even sexually abused him. We oh. found out. Oh. You know, and you know, and the neglect. Remember how we would go there on a Tuesday and the house was filthy, dirty. You know, we would clean the house for him afterwards, you know. So his brother uh, was horrible to him. So the man went through a lot and he was defenseless, uh -huh. you know, in so many ways. And this was a guy who was once a young, strapping, healthy Marine. St Marine. <laughs> yeah. You oh, know? yeah. Uh, which I never could understand because he was so kind and gentle. I just never saw him as a Marine. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he obviously wasn't a Marine long enough for that to change him. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he, in some ways he said he was lucky to get the MS because he was just a couple of weeks away from going to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Right. And he came down with this disease. And I, he, he had said often, he says, I may have been killed over there. Yeah. yeah. You, you know. never know. That would have been terrible, a terrible experience for yeah. anybody. I couldn't imagine something like that. Yeah. And generally a person with the MS he had generally didn't live past 50. And a lot of doctors and nurses accredited him living to 64. Two weeks shy of 50 of 64. Yeah. It was because of this lady right here, mm -hmm. the care yeah. she gave him. Yeah. So uh, a lot's to be said there. Well, he was easy to take care of despite the physical challenges in taking care of him. Because of his attitude, he made it easy to take care of him. Oh, yeah. There's, there's very, definitely people who are very irate to take care of. But yeah. Oh, yeah, Willie sure, sure wasn't one of them. No, people who felt sorry for themselves. He never felt sorry for himself. James, remember when he first moved in? When it came time for his uh, bowel movements and stuff, he called oh. it the three S's. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, shower, and shave. And shower, we kept shave. Saying, yep. No, you can't say it that <laughs> way. Can, we can't say that. We've got to call it something else. So, oh, you remember call we that, came God, up with fine. the word? We call it showtime. Showtime. <laughs> yeah. Showtime. And all the time on TV would say showtime, or somebody would say, we all start laughing. <laughs> Oh, his, his favorite movie was Men in Black because, well, and, and Zorro. I get he loved Zorro too because it was a Spanish theme. But Men in Black because all the aliens came from Queens, New York, which is yeah. where he's from. <laughs> so let's let's talk. Let's go into a little bit more ab about the um, the final years of his mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. and I, and those. Those were the uh, I know were the absolute roughest of the time because he became fully bedridden. Yeah, you you know it took away all your social life. It took away it took away a lot of what you guys could do. It, it's, yeah, it, but more especially so what he could do because you know mm. like we had mentioned he, he loved going out. He loved doing things, getting out of the house. And then he couldn't go nowhere. And then uh, and on top of that, uh, your grandfather died during that time period. Yeah. Your grandmother's mind was going with the dementia. Yeah. I remember that um, the night grandpa died, you guys had gone away. And I, I actually had come over for the weekend to take care of Willie. Because by that time, I was already, you know, married. I had... What? I had two kids at that time. No, Will was in uh, respite at that time, son. Was he in respite at that time? Yes. Oh, no, that's right. I came over that weekend to watch Grandpa yeah. and help out with that that weekend. Never mind. 
But, um, you know, now I, I know we talked about the positive things about the um, religion and everything for him. Now, at this point, though, where you guys were living at, mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know, especially – and you guys lived – let's just put it frank. You lived out in the middle of BFE at this point. You lived on a dirt road that was off of a limestone road. Yeah, but everybody did in that area. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah, lived in the swamp. <laughs> it's it still didn't make it any easier sometimes. That's true. And, I, and I'll and i give them that because I, I know there was a time when I lived with you there that when a rain came, it washed out the road. I couldn't even go to work Yeah, because of yeah. where you guys live. <laughs> but even still, even in the best weather and the best – of days for that road, people didn't hardly come over to see him. And mm -hmm. in some ways I can, I can understand because when there's somebody like that, they're hard to understand as it is. Cause Willie was always very hard to understand when he talked mm -hmm. and it, it's very hard for people to want to, go see people in that situation as it is. So mm -hmm. he was, I'm sure he was f feeling pretty isolated and alone at that point too, because he couldn't go I, anywhere yeah. and nobody was coming to see him. Well, your mom was staying home with him all the time, of course, taking care of him. I was still a presiding overseer and I had to go to the meetings and I would beg people to come visit and their excuse was, uh, oh, we, I, I can't understand them. What will I say? I said, you don't have to say anything. Just talk. And, you know, if he, if he says anything, just shake your head yes. You know, sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Well, I understood almost everything he said. And, and I said, well, you know, I can be there and I can tell you what he says. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, but they just wouldn't come. And, yes, that's true. We lived uh, a little off the main road there, no doubt. But. It, Most people did in that area. They were very used to, I mean, they go out in field service and they would drive all these roads and do that. Yeah. You know, they go to strangers, but they wouldn't come to, you know, their so-called brother to visit. And, uh, and and I get what you're saying. I'm, I'm also trying not to be too, um, too hard either, I guess you could say. Yeah. You and, know, cause and, this, this isn't really, this isn't about, trying to bash anybody or anything, no, no. you know, this is, this is supposed, this is to be about his life and be yeah. a remembrance of Willie because he really changed our lives in a huge way in many ways. for the positive, you know, put us in, put us all in a position in life that we never would have been in without him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and even circuit overseers wouldn't even come when they visited. That's that's what really hurt. No matter what. All they worried about was if he was going out in field service. But right. He, and he did go out in field service at, when he was able in in a wheelchair. And it was but, the most amazing experience. <laughs> but what, unbeknown to Will, what he did not know, because when your mom had to stay home all the time, <laughs> your mom woke up during that time by, you know. Well, hearing, yeah. But, and, uh, but let me finish. He even helped in that way of us helping us wake up because she had to stay home to take care of him. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> but then, uh, you know, so his final, how long was he on a respirator for? I, I, he was, he Got an operation in uh, January of '09, and then he died a year and a half later in June of 2010. So a year and a half he was on the respirator. And they only or, gave, it was a ventilator, actually, not a uh, respirator. Yeah. So to be clear, a ventilator. And, and, the, and the and the doctor told your mom uh, when they uh, they did an exam on his diaphragm, they found he didn't have a diaphragm to well, speak you, of. Your is normally under your rib cage and when they did and they x-rayed him it was up under his 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 uh nipples basically and they said they only gave him about two years to live yeah at that point and uh it was it was uh basically we knew it was the beginning of the end right or will 
you know. Yeah, and that that's he was still in a wheelchair for a while, but I think about the last maybe six, six eight months, months yeah, he, he was, was actually bed. bedridden. Totally bedridden. Uh huh. And and, the, and this is partly why I wanted to do this video too because we had both given our stories, you know, like interviewed you guys in December. And of course mm -hmm. I've given my story on the channel, but I've never talking to, talked about Willie yet and how big of a part of our lives he was in that yeah. regard, you yeah. know? And I, and I think it, it's a good story because despite the hardships of learning how to take care of him and accommodating for him and everything. He brought a lot of joy into our lives. He taught us a whole lot, showed really showed what true unconditional love really is and concern for others. And I think that is just one of the most truly amazing things about him. And, mm -hmm. you know, before, yeah. In talking about doing this video, Dad said we should do a toast to him. So, <laughs> did did you bring your stuff? Of course. No, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually decided. So today would have been Willie's birthday, as we had mentioned earlier. Well, tomorrow is my birthday. Happy birthday! <laughs> and my parents. Bought me a little gift that I got in the mail the other day. And I decided that I'm going to go ahead and crack it open for this toast and try out this gift. All so right. This is going to be the official opening of this bottle, too. Because as, as you can see, it's still sealed off. <laughs> Comes from Ellicottville, New York Distillery. So let's uh, open this up. and It's the booth right behind our booth at the farmer's market. <laughs> That's why we're so happy to be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they get free samples. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Oh, there we go. How does it smell? I'll let you know. Hang on. Smells pretty good. Can you take a whiff? For for those who don't know, my wife's sitting in the on the couch next to me here. <laughs> so I'm only gonna have to I'm only gonna have a little bit. But uh Something we never got to do as witnesses is make toast. And so this one goes out for Willie for, you know, how he changed our lives and, you know, for so, what a good person he was. To our, uh, to our friend, Will. To one our friend, the Will. One we've ever had. Here, here. <laughs> okay, yeah. go. Mm -hmm. Ours is, our drink is Southern Comfort. Mm. <laughs> How is it? Hmm. That's actually, that's pretty good. Do you want to try? Okay. <laughs> it's pretty smooth, actually. Little, little bit harsh at the end, but it goes down real smooth. Okay. So it's, ac it's actually good. Good. So. Good. So happy birthday, Will. You would have been 75 today. Tomorrow's your birthday, and guess what? We're going to do it on YouTube. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear James. Happy birthday to you. And any more so you can take care of us in our old age. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I am going to take care of you in your old age. <laughs> You can take care of us. <laughs> so, all right. So, anyways, that's uh, that's the story of Willie. 
Yeah. There's yeah, we could write a thousand pages, but yeah, you know, there's no time. Oh, I, I know, I know. We we no. could go on a lot more, but uh, you know, for time's sake and everything, I think we covered the important parts of it all. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Yeah, we there isn't a day that goes by that we don't talk about Will. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that and that that's something because that's eleven years after he's passed away. You know yeah. when he when he passed away, let people know he passed away in Barb's in my arms. At home. At home. He was in our arms arms when he died. Yeah. And it affected us so much uh, after he passed away. Uh, everybody was saying, "Well, you need to." Well, now you come back to meetings, but no one realized how hurt we were from it. Uh, your mom and I both lost a tremendous amount of weight yeah. mourning over his death afterwards. It took weeks for us to get the ring or the buzzing of that buzzard out of our ears when the ventilator at night would go off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah. Uh, it was it was traumatic in many ways. And, and I think, you know, not complaining about, it, but it shows how much we loved him that, you know, uh, and we really yeah. cared. And I know he cared for us. And the, and the last final thought, even though we were awake about the organization, we never let him know because we felt that would be a, a, a bad thing to do for him because his hope was in, you know, living on a, on a paradise earth forever, healthy again. We did not want to break that. Yeah, that, that's a very good, mind. that's a very good point to bring out. Yeah, you don't. You don't want to break somebody's spirits like that, especially yeah. at the end of their life like that. If that's what they're holding on to, yeah, to yeah. look forward to, you don't that want to been, take that from them. That, that would just been cruel. that would that ruin him. Cruel. And that would have just been so cruel. Mm -hmm. Even so, though we knew it wasn't true and all this stuff, but we did not want to do that. That would have and, been the most unloving thing and, we could have done. And add to the fact that. Even though you could have easily not um, listened in on the meetings, of course, at the time your way of listening into the meetings was through a telephone, so you yeah. only had it on speakerphone, not like they have on Zoom nowadays where you can yeah. see it. So yeah. you were listening in over the telephone, and mom would call it up every meeting and set it down for him to listen to. Yeah, yeah. Despite her being awake at that point. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So yeah. there you go. So, so yeah. So so here's to a good friend. May he rest in peace. And I think on that note, we'll end it. Right. That's very good. Thank you, James. Thank you, James, for letting us uh, go down memory lane this way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. And um, until next time. Okay. Bye, y'all. Bye.